Today we are going to Ladakh, which is one of the Union territories in India. We landed at Kushuk Popula Rinpoche Airport, which is Le Airport, and checked into this beautiful hotel, the Indus Valley. And if you come to Le via flight, it is mandatory to stay in Le for 48 hours to acclimatize as the oxygen levels are low here. So you need to stay here for two days and adjust your body to adapt to this environment. So we stayed in Leh for three nights. We already rented a car for road tripping in Leh. And on our first day, we visited Leh Palace, which is a historical royal palace built in 17th century. And the place offers a panoramic views of the surrounding mountains and the town of Leh. And all the visitors can explore its architecture, royal quarters, and a museum showcasing the artifacts related to Ladakhi culture and history. And prepaid number doesn't work in Leh, so if you're traveling Leh, you need to have a postpaid number. As we had our HL number converted to postpaid and it was working here properly. We booked Innova for road tripping in Leh for seven days uh, and the details are mentioned below. We spent an hour here in Leh Palace, enjoyed the panoramic views and later then headed to Shanti Stupa. Welcome to Shanti Stupa. Shanti Stupa is a beautiful Buddhist white domed stupa located on a hilltop and built to promote world peace. It offers breathtaking views of the surroundings, Himalayan mountains and the Leh town. And we came here to enjoy the beautiful sunset and panoramic scenery. In evening we went to Leh local market and strolled in these beautiful streets. It showcases the beautiful Ladakhi culture and also has very nice cafes. In winters, half of the market was closed, but still, it was so much fun to be here. Next day, we went to the Hall of Fame, which is a museum and also a memorial dedicated to the Indian Army's contribution in Ladakh region. The Hall of Fame serves as a tribute to the Indian Armed Forces. It showcases artifacts and information about the brave soldiers and their huge achievements and it definitely was an emotional moment to witness all those huge sacrifices indian soldiers have made for all of us Spending almost an hour at Hall of Fame, we then headed to Spituk Monastery, also known as Spituk Gompa. It is a Buddhist monastery. Being at the top of the hill, it offers stunning views of the Indus River and the surrounding landscapes. Spituk Monastery is an important religious and cultural site in Ladakh. After 
After spending some time in Spituk Monastery, we then headed to the Magnetic Hill. The magnetic hill is surrounding land produces the optical illusion that a slight downhill slope is an uphill slope and you can experience the sensation of the vehicles moving uphill even when in neutral gear. Being in Ladakh in winters have been a total different experience. Wherever we went we could have the place to ourselves and it was really amazing experience. So our next point was the Sangam point which is the confluence of the Nskar river and the Indus river. The picturesque spot is known for the contrast in the colors of the two rivers as they merge. The muddy brown waters of the Zanskar river meet the clearer blue waters of the Indus river. It's been great and different experience to be here in summers. Along with the view, we also enjoyed walking on the frozen river for the first time and it was amazing. After Sangam point, we headed to the chilling point. It was a surreal experience to have the place just to ourselves and we had a great time here with an incredible landscapes. Ready? One, two, three, go! It's hard now. After spending some nice time here, in the evening we went to Patthar Sahib Gurdwara. It is a Sikh shrine and it is said that a demon hauled a large stone at Guru Nanak Ji but it softened upon touching him and left an imprint. It always feels so peaceful to be at divine places. Then again in the evening we went to Lee Market, spent some nice time, had some hot chocolate and dinner at our hotel and called it a day. Day 3 was a special morning as we woke up early at 5am and left for Thiksa Monastery at 6.30am in the morning to attend the morning prayer with the monks. It was a beautiful experience to be here at Tikse Monastery. We were offered to sit in the warm kitchen in this freezing cold outside which was around minus 15 degrees and and they also offered us this Ladakhi tea known as Gurgur Chai. Hello. Mm.
Tikse is a prominent Tibetan Buddhist monastery known for its resemblance to the Potala Palace in Lhasa, Tibet. Tikse Monastery is an architectural marvel situated on a hill and it houses various stupas, statues, paintings including a notable 15 meter high Maitreya Buddha statue which means future Buddha statue. After Tixi Monastery, we also visited Shea Palace and then headed to Hamas Monastery. Hamas Monastery is another significant Buddhist monastery in Ladakh, situated 45 kilometers away from Leh. This monastery is also famous for its two-day religious ceremony known as the Hamas festival. Surrounded by the beautiful mountains at the top of the hill, it was such a serene and divine feeling to be here. Hamas monastery is the largest and the richest Buddhist monastery in Ladakh. Just a few minutes away, they have also built a new gompa. So we were out since early morning and spent 6 to 7 hours outside and then we decided to just have a relaxing day ahead and also spend our New Year's evening in our hotel. The Indus Valley, it is an amazing hotel with all centralized heating system and in a prime location just 4 to 5 minutes walk away from the Leh main market. They made our stay easier in this freezing cold weather outside. So on day 4 at 10 am we left from Leh for Nubra Valley. At around 12 pm, we reached the world's second highest motorable pass called Kardungla Pass. We stopped here for 5 to 10 minutes and enjoyed the panoramic views. When you're driving from Leh to Nubra Valley, it is mandatory to have an oxygen cylinder in your car.
and again we made our next stop at North Bulu which is a checkpoint and being here is a total different experience in summers and winters. In this heavenly drive from Lake Tenubra, you would not get enough of these incredible landscapes. It is just amazing. The duck is magical in winters. Have you ever seen a flowing frozen river before? And at around 4 pm, we reached our hotel Old Thang and then just went nearby to see the sunset and landscapes. We met this beautiful family coming for ice skating and we shared their bonfire as well. So, we are in Nubra. Huh? We are in District Nubra, yes. And it's minus 17. Oh, it's so cold. Oh. Hello, welcome, good morning. Welcome to Nubra. So, next day we got ready to explore Nubra Valley, and our first stop was Biscuit Monastery. Biscuit Monastery is a well-known Buddhist monastery in Nubra Valley. It is the oldest and the largest one. It offers a panoramic views of the Nubra Valley and the Shok River. One of its highlights is the impressive statue of Maitreya Buddha which is visible from far away. This kid monastery. Oh my god, it's minus 15 right now. Then we visited the beautiful sand dunes of Hundo. When we visited this place in summers, it was full of little shops, lots of tourists, and which was a different experience altogether. And now in winters, we had the place to ourselves. And it was amazing. We spent three long hours here. Hunda sand dunes is a unique landscape in the Nubra Valley. It's famous for its cool desert environment and double humped Bactrian camels. People often enjoy the camel rides in the middle of the sand dunes. It provides a wonderful, distinctive experience against the backdrop of snow-capped mountains.
very different contrast of the sandy terrain in the middle of the snow mountains looks really beautiful. We are at Hunter Village Sand Dunes and whole sand dunes is our own. <laughs> Nobody. It's like we are in Mars. Look at that. I'm here. Wow, it's beautiful. So peaceful, so calm. Amazing. I can't do good sir. Cute warm night suit, warmers, night suit, sweater, scarf, hat, jacket. Now we are done with three layers and we are ready to have tea outside. You can also stay in Nubra for one more day and do a day trip to Turtuk village which is India's last village. We did that in summers, but in winters, most of the things in Turtuk were closed, so we did not go there. So this was the most beautiful drive we had from Nubra to Pangong. So we made a stop for tea and little lunch and at 3pm we reached this incredibly beautiful viewpoint of Pangong Lake. People also do a day trip to Pangong Lake and this point which is called Three Dates Points because the movie was shot here but staying here is an amazing experience and would be better in summers I guess but winters had its different charm. So we were staying in Pangong Nest, cozy rooms with eating, sipping onto a hot tea and coffee, lake view from the windows of the room, it was all just incredible experience. We are staying at this Pangong Nest and very beautiful stable cottages with heating system so it's nice and the breakfast and dinner is included in just by the lake so we can just walk and stargaze at night oh, it's gonna be amazing 
I'm just waiting. Like morning, Sandra should be from there. So yeah, excited. After breakfast next day, we just strolled by the sides of the lake and enjoyed this panoramic views. And then it was time to say goodbye to Pangong and go back to the lake to catch our flight. On the way back from Pangong Lake to Le, we made our stop at Changla Pass. There were only few cafes opened in Le Mape, and Jule was one of our favorite. We loved the vibe and also the food. We reached in the evening. Uh, spent the night in Indus Valley again and next morning it was time to say goodbye to this beautiful destination until next time. <laughs>